Today we're going to talk about the basics of meshing. Once you've logged into viz.crc.pit.edu, you will go to a new mate terminal, type in module, load ANSYS, and once ANSYS is loaded, you'll type in ISIM CFD. ISIM CFD is a proprietary software that's used for the construction of meshes. So today we're going to talk about the basics of creating a geometry. Now there's some basic tools and settings with an ISIM that we have to be aware of. On the left we have a parts tree. As you see at the moment there's nothing populated within our parts tree. And that's okay. We will use our geometry tab to construct points, lines, and surfaces. Points is where the vertices of our blocks are associated lines or curves are where the edges of our blocks are associated and surfaces are where the faces of our blocks are associated we need our points lines and curves to fully define and constrain our blocks the blocks contain mesh before we begin you should go to the settings tab and come down to model and units we want to make sure we select our proper unit system if we're using SI units, we will select meters and click apply and OK. <clears throat> now, as you see, there's nothing on our screen. We have an X, Y, and Z coordinate, but nothing's available. What we're first going to do is going to ensure that we are under our geometry tab and select create point. Under create point, we have a variety of mechanisms. We can select from screen. I would highly advise to never use this function. You also have X, Y, and Z where we can provide coordinates of our point. You can construct a point based upon an existing point and how much you want to change it in a delta X, delta Y, and delta Z fashion. The remainder deal with curves, any parameterization between two points, putting points at the end of our lines, putting points at the intersection of our lines, putting points a certain distance along a line and projecting a point from a line to another line. Let us first start by selecting creating a point using explicit coordinates. And when we do such, we have the method of creating one point or multiple points. Let's start. Your x, y, and z are going to be your numeric values in meters. It's always good to create a point in your origin. So we can click apply. Now what we see immediately under our parts tree is our model is now populated and we have something called geometry and parts. Our point right now is in something called geometry. If you don't like the name geometry, you can right click, rename, and we can call this points. <clears throat> now the next point we construct Let's say we want to model a block that is half a meter by half a meter in size. Our next point would be 0 0.5 in our x direction. And what we have to ensure of <coughs> is where we're going to put this point. If we have inherit from part selected, it's going to put this point in a geometry part. Or if we deselect that, we can come up to from screen. Click our point, center click to accept, and now it's going to put our point into our points part. If we click apply, we have our second point at a distance of 0 0.5 meters away from the first. We can put one above and one to the left. Now we've created four points that are going to construct a block. Now if you're uncertain that you've entered the proper values, under the dialog box, it will tell you the points that are created, but it gives you no information about the values of said points. You can come up to the measure tool and you can select a point, which is going to give you its discrete location, and you can right click to deselect, and then you can select a new point. So our top right point has an x value of 0 0.5 meters, a y value of 0 0.5 meters, and a z value of 0 meters. So we can ensure those points are created correctly. Now what we want to do is connect these points by a curve. Thus we 
come to our create modify curve utility select this and we have the ability to put points within sorry curves within our points part and then we have a variety of means for which we can construct our curves the first one is from selecting multiple points within our system so if we select our bottom left to top left we're going to have a curve that exists, exists as such if we center click we can accept now we can move along our box and for instance if you accidentally click three points it's going to try and create a spline to approximate that curve all you have to do is right click to deselect center click to accept now we have four curves that are going to represent the edges of our block we also notice in our part tree the curves is selected and say you want to group your curves under another part under part we can right select create part we can make sure we select entities and we can call this curves and we can select our entities now a new dialog box appears and the only thing that you need to be concerned about is the four icons on the right or we can select points, curves, surfaces, and bodies. Now if you're having trouble selecting something on the screen, if there's many geometries on the screen, you can deselect surfaces and points such that you're limited to only selecting curves of interest. If we accept those, now we have a new part called curves, a new part called points. This allows us to organize our geometry in a pretty consistent manner. Last but not least, we need to put a surface. So if we come to create modify surface, we can create a part called surface. And we're going to be using primarily the top left icon, which is going to create a simple surface from a method of two to four curves. If you have more than four curves representing the region where you want your surface to be applied, just select from curves. Now, it says select curves with your left button. We will select these <clears throat> in an ordered sequence. Center click to apply. And it appears to have given us just a line. However, this is a rendering issue. Under our geometry tab within our part tree, we can see surfaces exist. And if you right click, we can come down and click solid and then transparent. Now we have a transparent <coughs> surface. So if you left click the screen, it's going to rotate <clears throat> about your origin. And if you hit control while middle clicking, you can pan. <clears throat> so with CFX, we can't run 2D models as such. We actually need to construct our model three dimensionally, but we're going to have a unit cell depth. So all we have to do under our geometry tab is come to transform geometry. We have a brown box with a yellow arrow overhead. We can transform our geometry multiple ways. The first tool within is a selection of our geometry. Now, we want to make sure we have our points and surfaces as well as curves selected. We can select our geometry. It will all turn a gray to light brown. Center click to accept and we can come down to how we want to transform this geometry. We can translate it, we can rotate it, we can mirror it, we can scale it, make it larger or smaller, or we can do a combination of all the above. And we can additionally copy. Now you can copy multiple times, but for now we only want to copy once. And our method, as of now, is explicit, i.e. we can provide a delta z that's going to allow us to copy this geometry within space. Now various other methods exist. Vector works well if you have two points already within your system and you want to copy your geometry from one point to another. But let's set our Z offset to be 0 0.1 and we click apply. Now what we see is our geometry has been copied. Now before we can put a block in we have to finish our curves and our surfaces. So I will put curves under our curve part tree.
and I will build the remainder of our surfaces under our surface. Thus, we have a three-dimensional block that is defined by points, curves, and surfaces. Now, before we actually put in a block, we have to make sure we identified our surfaces that are going to correspond to our boundary conditions. If we do this ahead of time, it makes the use of CFX much easier such that we do not have to modify the surfaces within CFX Pre. So although we have our surfaces defined, what I'm going to create is something called TC. This is going to be your cold side boundary condition. And let's assume the left hand side of our block is going to be a cold side temperature boundary condition. I can select this entity and make sure I have only surfaces selected. I selected that surface and now TC we can change color and make blue. That's going to be our cold side surface within our system. Let's assume our right hand side is going to be TH, a hot side boundary condition. TH has been populated. Let's change the color. <clears throat> let's make him red. And let's assume the top and bottom are adiabatic. I'll define this as adiabatic. Now I'll select the top surface. And viz isn't too forthcoming this morning, so I will select the top surface for adiabatic and click apply. Let's change the color of adiabatic to white. And now I also want the bottom to be adiabatic. So I can click adiabatic, go add to part, and select the bottom surface. So those will be our adiabatic surfaces. Now all we have is our front surface, and this is going to have to become a symmetry boundary condition. So under part, I'm going to create a new part, and we'll call this front. I will select the front face, Click Apply, and on the back face, I'll create a new part called Back, and Apply. Now we notice Surface, if we turn this off, nothing happens. We can right click and go to Info. It contains 12 points, nothing else. We can delete our surface because it's no longer pertaining to any surface within our system. <clears throat> and we can look at the part we've created. We have a cold side on our left hand side, a hot side on our right hand side, two adiabatic surfaces on top and bottom, a front surface, and a back surface. Thus, we've created all the requisite surfaces we need to put blocks into our system.